Hey, we got a ton of great feedback on our last video showing how you can use SQL to query your data in Obsidian from almost anywhere with the Execute Code plugin, Python, and GlareDB. In this video, I wanted to address a few of the questions we've gotten, namely, when do you use the copy to functionality with GlareDB? What's it for? And hey, this looks really great for more exploratory work. What if you actually want to persist the results of your queries in Markdown instead of needing to recompute them every single time? So this video is going to be much shorter than the last one, and in it I'm going to demonstrate how you can use copy to to speed up your queries, save on compute costs, and just generally make things more robust. And then also how you can take your query output and save it as a table within a Markdown file, and how to save your plots as images and reference them in Markdown files so that you can use those to make reports that don't need to be recomputed every single time. Okay, so copy two. So in this example, let's get started by just running a query in Obsidian against the Snowflake table. And so I'll press run here. Um, while that's running, I'll walk you through it. So we are uh, importing OS and using that to get environment variables with our Snowflake credentials. Um, if this is not familiar to you, definitely check out our last video. Um, I have these saved in a .m file, and I show you how to get that all set up. Once we do that, we're going to import GlareDB, set up our GlareDB connection, and use that to query our, our data source. And so in this case, we're using GlareDB's read snowflake function, passing in our credentials, uh, specifying our schema and our table name. Uh, we're going to add a limit here, output it to pandas, and then print that pandas data frame uh, in Markdown. And so here you can see we've got our table. We have sale day. There's sale date and sale pricing here. It's pretty wide. Um, if your output doesn't look quite as nice as this, uh, check out the last video where I demonstrate how you can add a custom CSS snippet to your Obsidian Vault so that it will print in a way that's a bit friendlier on the eyes. OK, so we run our query. Um, and a nice feature of GlareDB is that you can actually run more queries directly against the data that you've saved as a data frame. So we have this DF that we've saved our data to, and you can actually just write a select star from DF. So if we do that here, and you can see we have two, two entries where the sale day was seven. Um, you can see that right here. But if I close this and I reopen it, I'm going to need to run another query against Snowflake and start this all over. And if I'm running a complex query or a query that's against a lot of data, that can take a while and costs can also add up. So instead of running directly against Snowflake every time, I can just use GlareDB's copy to feature to save the data as a local file. And then I can just query that next time instead. So what I'm doing here is I have the exact same query that I ran before, select star from read Snowflake, but I've wrapped that in parentheses with copy and two. So copy and then the query and then two. And then I passed in uh, the name of a file. And again, uh, check this out. I talked a little bit more about how I've, I've set up my directory here. But once I run this, let's, I have this empty data directory here. What's going to happen is it's going to take the output from here and save it now as a, a snowflake.csv file, which contains my data. And so now next time, instead of needing to use the read snowflake function to go back and hit the snowflake instance, I can just cop, I can select from my newly copied data. And so I've got the exact same data here saved as a CSV. Now, if you're using this for reports, if your data doesn't change so much, you won't have to run this very much. If it is changing and you want to stay up to date, you'll want to make sure that you're saving the data as frequently as you need. Um, you could do things like including the date within the file name so you can track when the data were updated. And you could even write SQL in GlareDB to diff the file you've saved against the actual table. So you could like write a join of your CSV that you have saved against the actual table that is in, in Snowflake or Postgres or wherever it is. So there are a whole bunch of different possibilities here. So please let me know what works for you. OK, so you have now saved your data within your Obsidian Vault. You're saving time and resources whenever you run your queries. You're, you've even kind of done a basic ETL operation with an Obsidian. But you'll notice that every time you close and reopen the note, or even if you just go and like edit the code, you're going to have to rerun the code if you want to see your table. Luckily, Pandas can output a data frame as Markdown, and Obsidian, Obsidian loves Markdown. 
So what I like to do is I'll use Python subprocess module with pbcopy to take the data frame, convert it to markdown, and then copy it to the clipboard. So if I run this, it'll copy it to my clipboard. Then I can just paste this here, making sure to add a new line. And sometimes this takes a minute or two to just render as a table and you'll see like a big, a big blob of text, but this rendered pretty quickly. Um, and here you have a table. So you can scroll on through it, you can take a look. Um, you might notice that I've used a custom CSS snippet here too to make the formatting a bit nicer. So without that, no matter how long the table is, it is going to take up that much space in Obsidian. So here I've put a max height. Um, I've also frozen this top, top row, the header row, so that you can actually see what the different columns are as you scroll through. Um, I'll make sure to add the link to the custom CSS snippet in the description. So check it out. And again, check out the last video if you want to see how to use it. Okay, so that's how you embed tables. What about plots? So what I like to do is instead of just showing the plot, like as I did in the, the last video, uh, I also like to save the plot as a PNG or, or another image file. And so in this particular case, um, I'm making a plot of the data that's going to map the frequency of the sales by longitude and latitude uh, and plot them on a map. So when I run this, you'll see we have our, our plot over here. Um, this is like wrapped within this window. So it's not the most beautiful view, but you can get a, get a sense of that. But we've also created, I have this, this plots folder that I've created and I have this scatter map PNG. And now I can just use markdown embedding of images. So if we do uh, exclamation mark and then open close brackets, and then you put in the path. So I think it's just plots slash scatter map dot PNG. And now you've got your image right here. It's lovely. Okay, so something else I like to do here, just in general, in terms of workflow, is like I'll open up um, maybe a second second window. Um, here. And then I'll keep them side by side. And then I'll have one file, one markdown file, which is really like representing my explorations. And then I'll copy and paste my tables and reports on the other side. So if I run this, and then maybe I'll paste that. And then I'll embed my, my plot over here. So this is like just a, a nice way that I, I like to work. <clears throat> um, so you can have something that's a little bit more of a draft where you can you do it, use it for scratch, and then you have something which is a bit more of the finished report that maybe you wanna share with others. Okay, so now you know how you can use Obsidian to explore your data, do some basic ETL operations, plot your data, save the output as a more finished report. Um, this definitely started off kind of as a project that seemed like, hey, can, can I do this thing in Obsidian? Like it was, it was more of a something to do on a lark. Uh, it's actually turned out to be pretty useful um, and pretty exciting. And so stay tuned. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can take the markdown report you've written um, by querying your data from wherever it lives with ClareDB and how you can host it as a website. So you can actually share some of this data and some of these plots with other people. Um, if you like the video, please uh, like, subscribe, do all the, all the YouTube things. Um, all the other all the other social media things. Thanks all and please let me know what else you'd like to see, what's useful for you, what are some things that you've run into. All right. Cheers.